Today we are going to examine the poem, We Wear the Mask, and we will be looking at four poetic and literary devices that the author, Paul Lawrence Dunbar, used in his poem, as well as determining how we would like to use them in our own poem. As I said, together we are going to define four poetic and literary devices read We Wear the Mask on page 83 of our To Kill a Mockingbird packet, annotate We Wear the Mask for examples of the four um, literary and poetic devices. And when we finish um, annotating, we will then be prepared to answer the discussion questions um, and post them to the Schoology discussion. And then you should be ready to write your own we Wear the Mask style poem. Before we read the poem though, I think it's important for us to know a little bit about Paul Lawrence Dunbar, who was born in 1872 and died in 1906. So Dunbar was an influential African-American poet during the early 20th century. He was the son of freed slaves and a friend of Frederick Douglass. And critics have said, that he was the first to rise to a height from which he could take a perspective view of his own race. He was the first to see objectively its humor, its superstitions, its shortcomings, the first to feel sympathetically its heart wounds, its yearnings, its aspirations, and to voice them all in a purely literary form. So Paul Lawrence Dunbar is a pioneer um, in literature. His poem is called We Wear the Mask. We wear the mask that grins and lies. It hides our cheeks and shades our eyes. This debt we pay to human guile with torn and bleeding hearts we smile and mouth with myriad subtleties. Why should the world be over wise in counting all our tears and sighs? Nay, let them only see us while we wear the mask. We smile, but O oh, great Christ, our cries to thee from tortured, from tortured souls arise. We sing, but O oh, the clay is vile beneath our feet and long the mile. But let the world dream otherwise. We wear the mask. So this poem is a metaphor for presenting oneself to society in a way that shows um, they are not impacted by the way society is treating them. Um, so this whole poem is a metaphor. We need to use purposeful uh, repetition in our poem and we already know that the action of repeating something that has already been said or written um, is purposeful repetition. And in poetry, um, we'll see repetitions of words or phrases. You've already written this definition on page 107 of your packet. And we use this in Two Names, Two Worlds, and we will use it again in We Wear the Mask. So when we look at this poem, We Wear the Mask, we are seeing repetition in a couple of different places. We see we smile repeated twice, um, and that is important. The repetition here is showing that no matter what happens, we smile because we are wearing a mask, and we wear the mask is repeated three times. Interestingly enough, grins is used here, which, uh, which evokes an image of smiling. So we have, even though grins isn't repeated, we have this repeated image of smiling happening throughout. And I think that that is very much intentional. Next we have um, purposeful poetic rhyme scheme. So rhyme scheme is the ordered pattern of rhymes at the ends of the lines of a poem or verse. You will write this definition down in your packet on page 108 because you will need to use this in your If We Must Die and an obstacle poem um, and you'll want to be able to reference it. Please pause this video now 
and write this definition in your To Kill a Mockingbird packet. So when we're looking at purposeful use of rhyme scheme, since we're only looking at rhyme at the end of the line, we're not looking at any internal rhymes, and rhymes, internal rhymes happen within the line of poetry instead of at the end of the line of poetry. So we're only looking at the end rhymes. And because we're only looking at the end rhymes for rhyme scheme, I have highlighted the last word. Lies, eyes, guile, smile, subtleties, overwise, size, while, mask, cries, arise, vile, mile, otherwise, and mask. When you are determining rhyme scheme, um, a rhyme scheme is a sort of pattern. And we'll see here in a minute a sort of pattern with the rhymes. So it's not enough to just have random weird rhymes wherever it is that you'd like them. Rhyme scheme is a purposeful pattern. And when we use a purposeful pattern in rhymes, we have to figure out which words rhyme with each other. So we have lies, eyes, over wise, sighs, cries, and arise, and otherwise all rhyming with each other. We also have guile, smile, while, vile, and mile. All of those words rhyme. And then we have subtleties, which is kind of off on its own. And then we have mask and mask. So those are all the words that rhyme together. They are color coded. However, rhyme scheme is annotated and demonstrated through labeling using the alphabet. And when we use the alphabet, we always start with letter A. And when we look at this poem, we're going to start with the very first line with the very first word, which is lies. And we are going to label it with the letter A. Eyes rhymes with lies. So we are going to label this also with the letter A. Guile does not rhyme with lies or eyes. And so we label it with the letter B. Smile does rhyme with guile. And so we label it with the letter B. And now we have this word subtleties. It could be argued that this is near rhyme or slant rhyme. And that's basically when the author says, uh, it's close enough. Um, the argument would hold up because we have lies, L-I-E-S, and subtle T's, I-E-S, ending with the same letters. However, I think it's too far apart to be a near rhyme or slant rhyme. And so I'm going to give it a new letter and that is the letter C. Pause the video now and label the rest of the rhyme with the correct letters um, for the remaining two stanzas of this poem. So otherwise rhymes with lies, so it has an A. Size rhymes with lies. So we label it with an A. While rhymes with guile. So we label it with a B. And we always return to the first instance the letter label was used, which is why I keep saying it rhymes with lies. Lies is the first instance of the letter A label. Guile is the first instance of the letter B label. Mask gets its own um, letter at this point, it's D because it doesn't rhyme with A, B, or C. Cries rhymes with lies, so we give it an A. Arise rhymes with lies, so it's also labeled A. Vile rhymes with guile, so we label this one B. Mile rhymes with guile, so we label this B. Otherwise rhymes with lies, so we label it A and mask rhymes with mask, so we label it D. So when you annotate your poem for rhyme scheme, you need to highlight the last word in the line and label it correctly um, with an alphabet sequencing. We see that we do have a rhyme scheme here and it is A, A, B, B. 
we do have a C, we do have a D, but mostly the over uh, the the rhyme scheme that's used the most is A A B B. Our next vocabulary um, word and literary device that we are going to apply to this poem is rhythm. Rhythm is the measured flow of words and phrases in verse or prose as determined by the relation of long and short or stressed and unstressed syllables. Please pause this video now and write your definition on page 108 of your To Kill a Mockingbird packet. So there are five different types of rhythm when we think about poetry and when we think about music as well. And we are only going to study one type of rhythm today, and that is the I am rhythm. I am rhythm is unstressed first, and that's what the U symbol means, and stressed second, and that's what the slash symbol is. So if you're looking at an I am, it's an I am consists of two syllables. The first syllable is unstressed, and the second syllable is stressed. So with these words, embrace, suspend, and neglect, if we separate out the syllables by drawing a line between the first syllable and the second syllable, we can begin to think about how they are stressed. We don't say embrace, suspend, neglect. We say embrace, suspend, neglect. And because we stress the second syllable, we have an I am. So the first syllable is unstressed and the second syllable is stressed. Embrace, suspend, neglect. So that's with one single word, but we can also do this type of rhythm with um, two words like no way, I will look here. So when we stress the first symbol, syllable, we would say, no way, I will, look here. And the emphasis is off, just the flow of that is off. When we say these generally, we say, no way, I will, look here. So this is an example of an I am with two different words. When we look at the first stanza of poetry, it actually is pretty easy to figure out the syllables until um, really the fifth line. And the fifth line gave me a little bit of trouble, so I'm going to start there. And mouth is two syllables. With mirror is two syllables. And remember, an I am is two syllables. So sometimes our I am is going to split between words. Ied sa is the third I am, and tiltis is the fourth I am. So when we stress these, actually, before we talk about how these are stressed, pause the video and isolate each of the I am's in the first, in the first four lines of the stanza. You can put squares around them or bracket them or circle them on page 83 of your packet. So you should have something that looks similar to this. Um, to Hugh and Ing Hearts um, are a couple of places where we split words into syllables to make the I am. Now, if we were to label this, annotate for the rhythm, we would start with the first line and it would be, we wear the mask that grins and lies. So we wear the mask that grins and lies. Even when I say it normally without those heavy stresses, we can still hear that the force of the stress falls on where mask grins and lies. Pause the video now and continue to annotate 
the stressed and unstressed syllables by putting a U above the unstressed syllable and a slash above the stressed syllable in lines four through five in the first stanza of We Wear the Mask on page 83. So it should look just like this, because every um, stress, every every unit of rhythm is an I am. Our final poetic device is a couplet. So a couplet is two lines of verse, usually in the same meter. And that is what we just talked about. When you have um, rhythms, each one of these is a meter. So we have four meters here um, in this particular line. So now when we think about a couplet, when we think about two lines of verse, usually in the same meter, that's what we're talking about. And joined by rhyme, that form a unit. Please pause this video and write this definition on page 107 of your packet. So when we think about this, we need to think about the rhythm. The rhythm of the couplet, of each line of the couplet needs to be the same. And we're looking at rhyming couplets. So we will have the, the two lines that make the couplet will rhyme. So when we look at this first line, we wear the mask that grins and lies. It hides our cheeks and shades our eyes. We have a rhyming couplet. We have two lines in the same meter that rhyme. Our next couplet is this debt we pay to human guile with torn and bleeding hearts we smile. So here we have two lines in the same meter that rhyme, and that is why this makes a couplet. Pause the video here and figure out where the remaining three couplets are in this poem, and just um, bracket them together on page 83 of your packet. Hopefully you selected why should the world be over wise and in counting all our tears and sighs, and then we smile, but oh, great Christ, our cries to thee from tortured souls arise. We sing, but oh, the clay is vile beneath our feet and long the mile. So this is why we have this particular rhyme scheme, why we have the A, A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A, A rhyme scheme. And then we have a couple of other lines like subtleties and while and mask and otherwise in mask that don't make it a, a pretty little even set of a rhyme scheme. But the reason the rhyme scheme is what it is, is because we have these five couplets that force the rhyme scheme to happen. So when we view this poem through the lens of Paul Lawrence Dunbar's biography, and then when we think about the literary devices that he used to write this poem, it should add layers of detail onto this poem that perhaps we hadn't considered. We wear the mask that grins and lies. It hides our cheeks and shades our eyes. This debt we pay to human guile with torn and bleeding hearts we smile and mouth with myriad subtleties. Why should the world be overwise in counting all our tears and sighs? Nay, let them only see us while we wear the mask. We smile, but oh, great Christ, our cries to thee for tortured souls arise. We sing, but oh, the clay is vile beneath our feet and long the mile. But let the world dream otherwise. We wear the mask. You want to make sure when you, uh, you pay attention to the indentations that, that are happening here in this poem, we Wear the Mask was purposefully indented by the author two times to help bring it to the forefront of the reader's eye. And this is something that you want to do as well when you think about formatting your poem. So 
when you write your poem, you are going to use his style, but you are reflecting on a time you wore a metaphorical mask to protect yourself from harm. This whole poem is a metaphor. When you write this poem, I know it's it might be easy to write a literal poem about wearing a mask because we are in the midst of the coronavirus um, and quarantining, but we are not writing a poem about actually physically wearing a mask. We are writing a poem about a time we wore a metaphorical mask to protect ourselves from danger that we saw. So keep that in mind as you write this poem. You must include these literary devices in your poem, purposeful poetic rhyme scheme, rhythm, couplet, and purposeful repetition. And you will start your poem, the first stanza with this line, we wear the mask that grins and lies. You will end your second stanza with we wear the mask and you will end your final stanza with we wear the mask. You will not write line one, line two, line three, line four, etc. You will not put those words in your poem. You will only include the highlighted words in your poem. Now, we wear the mask is repeated here three times, but this repetition is not the repetition your teachers are looking for. We are looking for you to show us that you can use repetition purposefully and effectively, not that you can identify repetition. So you need to have another piece of repetition in your poem in addition to we wear the mask. Finally, please email your language arts teacher if you have questions about this particular poem. And don't forget to indent those lines. So today we defined our four poetic literary devices. We read We Wear the Mask and we annotated We Wear the Mask. And now what you need to do is finish annotating any part of the poem that you didn't while you viewed the video, answer the connection questions and post to the Schoology discussion and write your own annotated We Wear the Mask style poem.